Hi everyone, this is Srini here and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, I would strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications. So let's get started with today's video. So today the topic which we are going to have a video on is automation lead interview questions. So this has been a very popular topic these days because there has been a lot of demand for automation lead positions in the market for selling name automation lead. And what we are going to look at are all the practical interview questions which you are going to get. So be it like an online interview, which you are attending over Webex or any other platform, or it be it a in-person interview, these questions are going to remain quite similar. Okay. So this is going to definitely help you all to prepare for the interviews. And also you can expect, and you can try to do a mock interview with your friends or colleagues. That is definitely going to put you in a better position when you, before you go for the interview. Okay. So I'll share a document as well with you all. I'll get get started first with the document and the questions. Okay, so I've prepared some questions. I've been an interviewer myself throughout multiple companies and I know what are the skill sets the employer is looking for for different types of positions, right? And being a Serenium Automation Lead myself, I know what practically the questions the interviewer would be asking the candidate. So let's get started. So the very first question is about explaining your career experience in brief. As the name suggests, we need to have the career experience given in brief. So the interviewer is not expecting you to give a very detailed explanation about you, all your past history of companies which you have worked on. What they are primarily interested to know are your skill sets. Okay. So just keep it very simple that my name is Srini and I've worked in the IT company for so and so years of which I have got so and so experience. Let's say I'm just giving my, okay. Let's say, for example, you're saying 12 years automation and let's say three years manual, for example. I'm just giving a sample explanation here. Once you talk about your name and your uh, total experience, then give a breakup and then tell which tools and languages have you used in automation testing. So this is what they are interested to know. They are interested to know about your automation skill set. Okay. So let's say, for example, Cypress, then Python. Okay, so I will say Python, I can say PyTest I have used, okay. Cypress automation tool, then Selenium with Java okay. and Python, okay, because I have used both of them. Likewise, Python using PyTest framework. And if after this is done, then you talk about the automation frameworks. Okay. So like example, in Cypress, we use Mocha, right? Similarly, in Python, we are using, let's say, PyTest framework, or someone might have used robot framework for that matter. If you have used Selenium, then you would be aware we have data-driven framework, keyword-driven, right? So there are different frameworks which are there. So depending upon which one you have used and you are comfortable to talk about in the interview, you can mention that one. And then we have hybrid framework, right? Which is a combination of two or more frameworks. So data-driven, keyword-driven, Kukumba-Viridian, hybrid framework. These are the four frameworks which are popular in Selenium. Okay. So TestNG is not a framework. It's just a, I would say a component within the framework. Like TestNG is how we do, uh, one of the way of doing unit testing, right? Like how developers do using JUnit. Likewise, Selenium has only four frameworks which are popular, data-driven, keyword-driven, kukumba VDD, and hybrid framework. Okay. So this is what you need to keep it very much confined your answer to and limit it to the schools, tools and skill set and the programming languages also you can mention what programming languages you have expertise on. So I can say Java, I can say Python. Likewise, whatever is your skill set which you are pretty much comfortable to talk about because be ready to face questions on this. It's not just about telling what you know. You should be also be ready to solve questions if you answer, right? So basically, you have to prepare very much your resume perfectly. So you should be able to answer any question being uh, asked based upon your resume. So if you have put in your resume Java, Python, C sharp, so be ready to face questions on that. Okay. Second question is explain about your roles and responsibilities as an automation lead. Okay. What I mean by roles and responsibilities as an automation lead is that what is your day to day? How it does it look like? Now here, you need to tell about your role. So for example, you someone might say that 70% that person is working as a automation lead role, okay? And 30% individual contributor, okay? But this is 
going to give a very different picture because they might be looking for a person who is actively involved in code contribution, right? So I would say make it the vice versa. 30% automation lead and 70% as an individual contributor. So why we are saying this way is because uh, this will give them a picture that you are more into coding and you're more into technical side and not just as a lead role. So this is going to give them a very um, good picture about how your day-to-day -day job is distributed. And then you can tell what activities you do as an automation lead, right? So I'm going to list down some of the activities which I do and everyone, most of you all might be also doing it. For example, we participate in different meetings. Okay. Meetings. Okay. Then you uh, work on the different types of data which is required. For example, there might be test scenarios, test cases, creation, then automation scripts creation. Okay. And they are reviewing with different stakeholders or sign up. This is another activity which we do, right? So automation scripts creation I've already mentioned. Then uh, I would say in this particular thing itself, it will cover your code, your locators, etc. So no need to elaborate this point as such, but I'm just giving you for your understanding that this covers everything, be it a framework updation, enhancement, anything, right? It covers everything within it, framework enhancement as well. Next part, which we do as a lead is code reviews. We perform code reviews of the team. So being a lead, you have to do code reviews of the team and ensure that they adhere to the code practices, right? As well as the basic code practices and the hygiene of the code should be there. It should cover all unit test cases, all unit test cases. It should pass, all test cases should pass before we merge the PR, right? Et cetera, et cetera. A lot of abbreviations and other things have to be also taken care. Basically, the code hygiene has to be reviewed thoroughly. Okay. What next thing we work on? We work on test metrics, right? Be it manual test metrics or automation test metrics. So there are key test metrics which we share with the different stakeholders as a part of our daily status report and weekly status report. So those all metrics we need to tell, like how much is the percentage execution, percentage pass rate, how many defects count is there, right? What is the ROI? What is the return on investment from an automation perspective, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there are different, so many metrics which are present. Then of the total bugs which are there, how many are not a bug? Or how many are accepted by developer, accepted defects percentage? It's how many defects have been accepted by the developers that it is indeed a defect, right? Then what else do we need to work on, right? We also participate uh, meetings with respect to management. So that also would come here. Okay. Then uh, uh, grooming team. Okay. Grooming team and resolving their doubts. Timely manner, in timely manner. And ensuring good environment within the team. Right. So you need to also ensure that all the team members have a good synergy. There are no conflicts uh, with respect to anyone's, you know, uh, the way you're delegating the work, right? Work delegation done has to be in a proper manner, in a proper manner, right? No partiality shown towards anyone. So like that. So different things which you need to take care. Another thing which we have to also work on is um, overall ensuring deliverables are moving in moving with correct pace okay. and there are no risk this is very important guys because if there's any risk to your scrum timeline if you're working in agile model you might be knowing that we have two to three weeks or maybe one week or whatever depending upon the way agile mod model right which you are using so there might be any risk so if there is any risk involved then any risk spotted call it out Call it out to Scrum Master and raise the raise it in different forums as appropriate, right? So there might be different forums or meetings where you may have to ensure that we escalate timely in order to get the required support. And another key important thing is getting support from dev and cross-functional teams or cross-dev teams, etc., right? Cross teams for any issues which is impacting the team. 
So you have to play a role of a lead, right? So it's not just about doing our own work and ensuring that, okay, we complete our own work on time. It's also about getting the team together along with you and get to the finish line, right? Because we don't want to have any kind of a spillover from the current sprint to the new sprint because there will be a lot of question raised as to why there was a spillover, why it was not completed, what were the issues or risks you saw, why didn't you raise the issues to our notice, right? So there are so many things which the lead has to face. So you have to be up to the task and ensure that everything goes in a timely manner, right? So these are the couple of points which I have explained. So let's just have a quick recap on what we have seen. We have seen about explaining about your career experience in brief. And also the second question was about explaining your roles and responsibilities as an automation lead. Okay, let me just cover up one more question and then we can cover up the remaining things in the next video. Okay. The next question is about explain about the framework you had worked upon and its components. This is a very much expected question for any senior position working on automation. They will definitely ask you to explain about the framework, right? So as we have seen above that, if you are talking about with respect to Python, then you have PyTest framework. So you have to explain the architecture or the how the layout of the framework is. So you have to draw a paint diagram and explain to them how the components are all present. So this is how somehow it would look like. You can draw a block diagram, okay? And within this block diagram, you can have different components created, okay? What these components are doing, what are the different layers which you need to uh, have in a framework, right? You need to explain to them. So it's all a Mavenized project, okay? So this is a Mavenized project. So like that, you will draw it to them and show that this is a Mavenized project. And in the Mavenized project, what you would be having, you'll be having different components, right? You will be having some packages where the test scripts are going to be present. So you need to draw the different components here. So let's say I'm talking about this particular layer as my config layer, okay? Here I'll be storing all different configurations of the project, right? Then there will be one layer which will be for utilities, right? So I would be having one particular package for utilities or the common code files which is required so that I promote reusability. There is no code redundancy being seen here, right? In the framework. Another thing which we need to have is the test scripts. You need to have test scripts in place, right? So your test scripts are going to be there. So you will be having test cases, okay? And you would be also having certain files for listeners, right? You will be having listeners. So I'm going to have a lot of components in the framework, but I'm just showing whatever, you know, different components I can think of right now. Another thing is that you need to have a reporting mechanism. There will definitely be some reporting within present in your project, right? So you can have the appropriate small number of boxes size shown. And here I'm going to talk about the reporting mechanism so that I can capture the execution reports. Okay. Likewise, there will be one component for doing the logging. So we can use log4j component for performing logging, right? So this is for logging. So I can say logs, right? What else is left here? We need to have a layer for page objects. Let's say we are using page object model, for example, right? If it's a part of our design pattern that we are using page objects, then we need to also have one particular component for page objects, right? Okay, now this is test scripts. You have written uh, the different types of uh, page objects here, like the different different pages are there, like login page and all that, etc. Right? You need to have test cases which are written here, which will be using these page objects to in order to carry out the execution. Right? Now, if in case you are using some Cucumber VDD based model, then as you might be already aware, in a Cucumber VDD, let me show it here. In a Cucumber VDD, the architecture may be slightly more having more components so the components which are extra i'm going to talk about now so you will be having a step definition layer okay so for those who don't know about kokuma pdd there is a video which i have created so you can look at that for kokuma pdd i will try to put a link for the same here in this video and i will have one more component for test runner right we need to have test definition we need to have test runner and then we need to have basically we need to have runner file and then we need to have a feature right 
we need to have features. So within feature file, you would be having scenarios, right? Scenarios, there could be other things, right? Which will be there, like scenario outline, examples, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So these things and are going to be the extra part when you're talking about a Cucumber BDD framework. So it depends upon what framework you're talking about, what are the key components which are there. So you need to explain them what each component would do, how it is important, right? And how it is interconnected to each other. Let's say they talk about what is step definition, how is test center, and how, what is feature, how they're interconnected. You should be able to explain the correlation between the different components. Likewise, you should be able to explain them how this entire thing works. And of course, this is a Mavenized project, right? So we would have a pom.xml. So we would have a pom.xml and what we need to tell them that this is a Mavenized project and we are storing this entire project that is the pom.xml and this entire project is going to be stored in Jenkins. So we are going to store, we are going to create a Jenkins job where we are going to give a path for our form file, right? But not directly, it will be path for our Git repository and inside git repo we are referring to pom.xml to trigger our execution right now this pom.xml internally will be having some linkage to our test ng suits right so this pom.xml is going to have some references for our test ng.xml whichever test cases we want to execute so like that this way we need to explain to the interviewer in a very confident manner about our project framework structure and be also prepared to write code if they want you to write a code. Okay, they may ask you to write a code for a particular component. So this is how a framework would look like the components, right? So this is just a brief way of how you can explain to them by drawing a diagram and just you should be able to explain them confidently, okay? So I have explained the first three questions, which are popular questions in automation lead, be it a product-based company or a service-based company. These questions are going to be a short, short thing in an interview. Okay. So this was the third question, which we covered. So in the next video, I'll cover the remaining questions. So stay tuned for my next video and do share with your friends and do subscribe and like my channel. Thank you so much. guys.